Hello folks, Dan the Wolfman here. Today we will be evaluating at the range the very rare Smith & Wesson 4513 TSW. Hey guys, I don't want any trouble. Six round, non-railed, rare Holy Grail TSW. Hopefully you've seen my unboxing already, where we go over a lot of the details, like the double action to then single action trigger pull, how the safety works, and all that. Today's video will be brought to you by Lone Mountain Ammunition. Go check them out. We're evaluating the ammunition today, both 185 and 230 grain, or vice versa. And a couple Don Hume holsters have an inside waistband holster here. And I'm also on my belt as a jit slide, which holds it very tight to the body. So uh, Don Hume is something you may want to look at, especially for old autos, metal guns, revolvers, things like that. I like a nice leather holster. Um, as I've said in the past, not all firearms on my channel are mine. So keep that in mind. I have the chance to review something awesome. Old classic Smith & Wessons, which I've done before. And I'm going to do that now. Before I forget, my channel's been Shadow for a very long time now, and I've seen numbers, you know, and a couple months ago, it actually wasn't for a few days. So please, always like and comment, fight the algorithm, hit the notification bell, maybe that helps. Um, so we're going to start off with Brand X, 230 grain reman from the six-round OEM magazine. Uh, first shot, we will do double action. Let's see where I'm holding. We're at seven yards. We will rock and roll as usual before this video is done, but I need to do some uh, accuracy testing, and I'm not an accurate shooter, and I've already worked a long day at armed security. All right, here we go. First shot, nine ring, just a tad low. Second shot, bullseye, just a little left, but break. All right, perfect function. Let's see how I did. And first seven shots results are DA pull, single action pull, and then, oh my God, I suck. But best five out of seven, Brand X, at least I'm consistent in how bad I suck. But I'm a bad pinky dangler. Let's see how I do with eight round magazines. Next up, different Brand X, 185 grain reman with a, I think this is a Smith 645, 745 rare metal magazine. Hopefully it doesn't. I'm going to try combat hold the first pull. And I yanked it a little low at the last second, but still just barely breaking the tenor ring. All right, let's go combat hold. All right, let's see how I did. And with a combat hold, pretty dead on, just a tiny bit low, but we see perfect accuracy here with the TSW full rails with six shots going in a jagged hole in the nine ring. I'm right-handed, and I'm drinking today because I'm tired, so it is what it is, but you can see the accuracy of the pistol. Now with the A-Round 4506 magazine Mark D, a yellow follower, you can update them to black if you want. Anyway, going for the center here, now with the Lone Mountain 230 grain. Smith & Wesson, how about giving me a T and E account? That would be great. Or, you know, a job since I'm, you know, close and I'm willing to work in different areas. All right, center one. And perfect function and lock back. Great reliability from Smith third gen. And with our Lone Mountain 230 grain, we see five are touching there in the nine ring. I mean, one of them's, or two of them are break, breaking the 10, but all one jagged hole. And then it's just me being bad today, the rest of it. But that's pretty on and very accurate. 
Check out this nice tight jet slide from Don Hume, now with the same D-Mark magazine, the Lone Mountain 185 grain, going to the bottom left, starting in DA. And I'm left eye dominant right hand shooter, so it has a little something to do with the left pole as well. And perfect function again. It's mostly me just getting more familiar with the pistol, but as far as shot size and location, I think this is our tightest group here with the Lone Mountain 185 grain. And it's a little higher than the previous group with the 230. So mostly me, but perhaps this pistol even likes 185. But as far as the ammunition is concerned, as far as not me messing up, the ammunition's been very reliable, pistol's been very reliable, and the ammunition's obviously uh, accurate as well. Guys, before I rock and roll, I wanna do one more groups, if you will, with the 230 grain from the Don Hume. And yeah, I'm not a group shooter, and no, it's not from a bench, it's not that scientific, but the ammo seems good, the pistol seems great. Might be a great six plus one, seven plus one, eight plus one action. Even 10, you can watch my CS45 video for that. All right, here we go. And I'm keeping both eyes open, by the way. And I dipped and jerked. And yes, that's just me. And yes, that's very annoying. Perfect function with this mag. Lock back. Awesome. Let's go see how bad I did. So here's the results of the 230 that time. Two I called and knew. I jerked and dipped. It was not good. Uh, but the five here, not bad. One and three quarters inch approximately groups. The 230 over here was one and a half inch group, all touching. And 185 here was one and a half about as well. If you're going from the farthest out uh, liar, uh, farthest to the farthest part of the, the holes. So while I'm not a group shooter, guys, not at all. I'm a combat, practical, realistic type of shooter. I don't do bench shooting. I would say that the Lone Mountain Ammunition 45, both 185 and 230 grain are accurate. We got five all touching there, probably about an inch and a half, maybe a tad bit less. And the uh, that was the 230 in here. Over here is the 185 grain, best five out of seven, one and a half. So both shot size and location. I'm a handed shooter left eye dominant, so we're seeing me pull to the left, and that's not great. But as far as the ammunition goes, perfect reliability so far. If it makes it through the rest of the day, perfect reliability. It's more than accurate enough. I would go check out Lone Mountain Ammunition. All right, let's see if the third jet can actually cycle spent cases that I dirty ones I picked off the ground. The second one is a, a federal nickel. It's not so bad if it gets through that. The next one, the fourth round is a uh, empty case that's kind of deformed and it's really dirty. Uh, and we're making it harder because it's, you know, the four, five, zero, six, eight round magazine too. It's not designed for that. So I'm really curious. We got evil Mark over there. Oh no, dead trigger. Oh no. <laughs> it even went back in it. You see it's going back in. Nice deep throw, empty brass. So it did it twice. That's all I could find. Just yeah, that's how reliable this pistol is. Hey guys, I want to demo something, what I think is the most realistic thing. you got to prepare for one to three bad guys, possibly five transitions, surviving seven seconds of a gunfight. Why I think you need nine minimum and gun. And why, if you're a better shooter, it should probably be a 45. And if not, I like 13, 14, and nine millimeter. And if you insist on a revolver, the first should probably be a three inch, six shot, 357 Magnum, and then a five or six shot lightweight or snubby as your backup gun, New York Reload. You're not gonna use a speed loader. There's no time for that. Let me demonstrate what I think is typical. Two to three yards, starting at three yards. Two to three yards, surprise, shot, and on. Ah! 
It should have been about seven. That felt a little slow, about seven and a half seconds. That's how long you're going to want a gunfight. Even if it's one guy, there may be five transitions. Let's see how I did. Alex, let me talk to you first. So, NYPD, average, mean average rounds of a gunfight. Eight rounds. That means a lot of 16, 18 round mag dumps, some with only one shot, right? Okay, uh, Tom Gibbons instructors, 8 to 11 was not that uncommon. I'm not sure how many fell in the 8 to 11 range, but 8 to 11 rounds needed, not that uncommon. I believe one was 12 yards. Most at the 2 to 5 yard range, most at the 2 to 5 yard range, two CQBs and I think three past 10 yards. 14 and 17 and 21, I think, yards. So extreme outliers. The rest of them, two to five yards. What do you see starting at two to three yards? Surprise, startled. See those first two shots were one-handed on purpose because that's realism before you get two hands on the gun. Uh, if you want to carry a nine, fine. At work, I carry a nine, but it's a polygonal, long-barreled with plus P plus hot goodness that makes it a little more than nine millimeter typical, right? Um, and you might want to consider nine rounds of 45, but why you need nine rounds is that there's going to be transitions. You're going to be moving. They're going to be moving, whether it's one to three bad guys. And I had one scenario where five guys were jumping out of a car to carjack me. Uh, and I was, I happened to be carrying a seven shot revolver at the time, but if you carry a revolver, carry a backup. You have to, you should probably carry a backup anyway, but if you're carrying a revolver, you got to carry a backup in my opinion. Now let's see how I did. I might've missed the small headed guy's headshot. Primary one-handed shot, surprise, startled, natural point shooting response, two in the A zone. I'll take that, and this is 45 and a 28-ounce pistol. Two shots a little low, but A zone, I'll take that. Two shots in the heart while I'm scooting back, so now I'm probably at about six to seven yards from three. I'm probably at about six yards at this point. Two in the heart, A zone, that's perfect. Headshot on him, a little low. Headshots on all these were a little low, but good enough to put down the attacker while I'm scooting backwards so I was dipping the barrel a bit as you're moving back. So that was probably about seven, seven and a half seconds. Do you really want to not be able to survive longer than that? Only four seconds? You're going to draw and shoot five rounds from a revolver or six rounds from a pistol and under three and a half seconds from the time it started, from the time you were, you responded. So uh, something to think about. Let me know what you think in the comments below. All right, some two-shot drill starting slow. Five yards at evil guy there. Super slow. All right, let's see how bad those were. All four were A zone, so it wasn't beak now. All right, let's see how I did. All right, so for first two shot drills, everything in the A zone, and I felt like my grip was off like a bunch, but everything in the A zone on the two shot drills and the Mozambique, my first Mozambique, everything's just a little low and maybe a little left in general. Uh, that's me, little low, the pistols were known maybe to shoot a little bit low. So I gotta remember to use a, a good combat hold up high with that front dot. Bad daylight, so let's get funky and just see what happens, happens. Five yards. Hey guys, I don't want trouble. Hopefully that was cool. Let's see how I did. And when you put stress on yourself and train a real, little more realistically, what I see here is two A zone to begin with. And then, oh crap, somehow I'm out of ammo. I'm a slide lock emergency reload. And then I go to this guy, one A zone, one B zone. I'm not so happy about that. I think I came back to him here. One a little high, let's call it B zone. One a little low, let's call it B zone. But not that far off from the center line spine. And then this guy got one A zone, let's call that a B zone. That's way down there. That's not too good. This one's in the heart, good. And then I give him a headshot, perfect T box, pretty much perfect T box. And uh, boom, I was out of ammo. So I think that was two plus uh, eight on the reload. That's 10 shots. Two mags of hot point function test, Dutch buffet, HSTs, critical duties, uh, XTPs, I think, and a couple others.
Have a print function, let's burn! Ah! underwood 230 plus p uh at the end there that's a little too much for this aluminum frame probably but anyway hope you guys enjoyed it let me know what you think is a six plus one seven plus one eight plus one i think eight plus one set up this way and yeah i had some weird stuff going there eight plus one 45 i think it's still ideal for carry this was ideal backup for lapd probably some sis guys uh you know really good to go and obviously We've had perfect functioning with the eight round magazines. That was an aftermarket 10 rounder uh, there that kind of hiccuped a bit. Uh, I think I'm running the slide just like on a Beretta if you don't put the decocker in or these without the decocker. I think I ran it and got the uh, safety on. Um, hopefully I cleared that fairly quickly. Hopefully some of my shots were somewhat accurate when I went to the modified car position. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments below. Please thumbs up, share, subscribe, fight the algorithm, hit the notification bell. I'm Dan the Wolfman, and make sure you check out my unboxing and all my videos. Show me some love, baby. Get my combative street jujitsu DVD. Keep your butt safe. Thanks. Results are crazy on 11 upper thoracic hits, one a little low. Seven upper thoracic, good A zone basically hits on that guy, and I think six or seven here.